Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, put your hands together for the Cinema 4D Boot Camp Modeling Tutorial episode. I'm Neil Berenblatt, here with CreativeCal.net, awesome website, some tons of tutorials to learn from. This is one of them. So, uh, what I'm going to teach you today is the basics of modeling in Cinema 4D. How to be comfortable enough to realize what's available to you as an artist inside of cinema. So let's get started. I'm gonna start with this cube right here. Very elementary, very primitive, something we're gonna be able to mess with a lot. And I don't know if we'll make anything in particular, but that is the adventure that we are going to find out. So, what I'm gonna demonstrate right now is that we can do a few things with this cube that we learned to do in the interface tutorial. We can move it around, we can resize it, and we can rotate it. Now, if you want to get a little more specific, you can go into the cube settings right here. If you click on it and go down to the attributes, you can change the, the size only in the x-axis, only in the y-axis, or only in the z-axis. So uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Also, if you want to give this cube more detail to its geometry, because right now there's only six faces, but if we want to increase that, we can. And this is actually called subdividing, adding more segments. Now, what I'm going to explain to you, this is the big thing about what we're looking at right now. This cube is fake. It's not real. It's inception. No. It is it is what I like to call non-destructive geometry, whereas we can increase and decrease these subdivisions all we want and nothing nothing really changes. Like, you can always go backwards. What we're going to do is make this object editable, which is going to allow us to go forwards, but also allow us to mess with this cube in any way that we want. So let's bring these all back to 100. Zero everything out, go to the coordinates right here and go to rotation and bring everything back to zero, just like so. Bring all the coordinates back to zero, cool. We have our cube just as we had it. Maybe, I think it was originally size 200, but it really doesn't matter, cool. So let's make it editable, which is this button right here, shortcut C, if you look at the bottom. So I'm going to click it and uh, watch closely when I do it at this icon right here. It's a cube right now, but when I click it, it becomes a triangular flat piece of geometry. And that indicates that we are in, um, we are in editable mode for this object. So what I'm going to explain to you right now is the way geometry works. Everything is made up of vertices, which are these right here, points. Edges are made up of vertices, and faces are made up of edges. So nothing can exist without points, without vertices. So let me, let me demonstrate that. Because it's very common for people to start selecting faces and deleting them, but then when you go back into vertice mode, you can see that we still have it there. So what you just did, or what you thought you did, is deleted a bunch of stuff when really you left traces of it behind. And when you're modeling something complex, that can really screw you up. So it depends on what you want. If you want to go back and to be able to do that, you just don't want to see it right now. If you want to connect these later, sure, keep it. But like, I don't want to keep it. So I got to get rid of that point. An easier way to do that would have simply been to just go in point mode and delete the point. And then, you know, but at the same time, look, we we're getting weird results. So then you have to go into the edges and delete this edge and this edge and this edge and then you realize you screwed that up. So maybe the right way actually would have been to uh delete 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 those faces. Yeah, that gets you what you want. But then you probably need to go delete the point. It's just something to know. It's a it's a very essential hierarchy to understand. Uh those are just the things that make geometry breathe life. So this menu is very important to know in that case. Let's undo that and get everything how we had it. So still editable because we're going to be working that way from now on. But so we can we can select and end uh, model in points, edges, and polygons. Just like that. Polygons or faces, however you want. It says polygon tool at the bottom. So we'll just, you know, we can call them polygons. We can do whatever you want. Okay, 
if you click on here, we have the model tool, which is basically just move the thing around. Under it, however, is the anchor point tool or object access tool. So right now, if we were to turn this cube, this is the best illustration of this I can give. If we turn this cube, we are turning it from the center of the cube. But if we go into the object access tool and move it, for instance, this way, now if we go back into the model tool and rotate, we're moving it from where we put that access tool, which is now on the side. So now we have this sort of rotating around us a different point. And we can do that anywhere in the cube. So we can just move this up. We can move it far away. It doesn't have to even be in the cube. So now it's rotating. This is the, the center of gravity for this cube. And this is everything I'm showing you with this cube is totally applicable to any object uh, that we're using. Uh, in editable mode. So yeah, we can do that. Cool. Awesome. Let's undo all that, get it back to how we had it. Sweet. The next thing we're going to look at is are the structure and functions tools. Let's do, let's do structure first because that's really where we're going to start learning our modeling. So let's just go down the list and decide what's important. Okay. So we'll go into point mode for instance and onto that so it's a little easier to see. In fact, if you want to just get rid of these things all together, you can filter out the axis just like that. This is where you can decide what you want to see and filter and yeah, just get rid of axis. Awesome. So now let's see what we got. Add point. I think it's pretty obvious what that does. Just sit it on uh, one of these edges because remember that points make up edges and we can just add as many points as we want just like that. If we go to, um, and, and notice I'm going to skip a few of these and I may come back to some of them later, but you know, like I said in the interface tutorial, we don't use all of them on a normal basis. Uh, let's delete some stuff so we can see what this does. Or actually, let's go to knife because this is probably the most important one. Knife does what you think it does. It cuts. So right now, if we look over at the attributes of our tool, we have it in line mode. It's going to make a single line. It's going to restrict itself to any what we have selected. We don't want that because we don't have anything selected. And it's going to cut all, through only what's visible. So it won't cut through the, through the uh, whoops, too uh, quick to the trigger. It won't cut the back of this cube. So if we do a cut from this point to this point, didn't cut the back. And uh, now we can take that edge, if we so wanted, by selecting it in edge mode of calls and we can move it just like so and I'll bring my axis back so it's a little easier to see so yeah that is the first crazy destructive modeling that we have done so we'll just keep that like that why not and move it back that way so it's not quite as funky and we can always 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 add more points so right there and then we can select that point and bring it out we're getting some pretty crazy stuff now sure why the hell not to render it, insane, looks like hell. So let's undo that, because I just don't like it. But you can see we put another point there. Um, we can keep cutting. If we go back to the knife tool, we can cut the top, we can cut this way. And uh, another insanely useful thing about the knife tool is loop cutting. So if we change from our mode from line to loop and hover over, you can see we're going to cut through the entire object. It's very easily illustrated here. So if we do that, now we can see um, we have this these options of what to select. We are given so many more options and it's very it's very custom because you're doing this according to the object that you're working with. So yeah, it's pretty awesome. Knife tool, extremely important. Remember it, write it down, don't forget it, or you will never ever model anything awesome in your life. That actually may be true because it's um, it's pretty important. Okay, let's keep going down the list. Actually, let's let's do this. I'm gonna delete a face, just like that. Okay, so you know what? I'll delete that too. So now those faces are deleted, and their points are well, they're still on the top and bottom. That is totally fine. Under structure, we also have something called the bridge tool. Watch if I connect that point to that point to that point, to that point, to that point, we have created 
we have recreated that geometry based on what we just did. And I think uh, you can actually, if you do it in a more logical order like that, yeah, maybe we get half the polygons. Either way, you're basically zigzagging until you get what you want. So there's a tool that we can use to recreate this polygon. And it is called, if you go into polygon mode, it is called the closed polygon hole. And it will detect where there is a hole in your geometry and it will fill it. So watch. Ah, there it is. So click and bam, we have our geometry back. We don't have any of those cuts we had, but we do have our geometry back. Our points should still be there. So we can go back to the knife tool, go into line mode, and let's see, let's display, go to line mode display. We can, I don't know if those were exactly right, but we can sort of recreate something and put some lines back there. Cool, and we'll go back to garage shading. Those are the different modes of ways you can see. There's hidden line, just like that, and lines is like x-ray, so cool. But I'll, uh, I'll keep in garage shading, awesome. You can also go to garage shading lines. I'm not sure exactly what that does, but so therefore I don't use it. Um, so yeah, that's the knife tool in conjunction with the closed polygon tool. Also, if you decided to delete this face, for instance, but wanted to, uh, you can, and th this isn't the most useful example of this, but if you go to the bridge tool right here and in point mode, you can actually start to rebuild different polygons. Actually, if that's what you wanted, if you wanted this shape to be an open door to this polygon, that does it perfectly. I can now, uh, it's gonna keep reconnecting every time I do it, so I can undo that and just get out of it and go back in and now it'll be separate and go back in the polygon or uh, point mode and so now I'll just restart again and yeah actually that is a cool example because now we have a triangle entrance into this thing so I think there's more practical examples than that but that's what the bridge tool does by selecting different points and zigzagging you reconnect to make shapes and polygons to fill in some gaps so that's the bridge tool uh, whoa! Also, we have the extrude tool. So let's see what that does. If we select a face in face mode and go to the structure extrude and we pull our mouse out, we are literally, that is what's called extruding geometry. We're pulling it out from itself or we can pull it in. Well, we'll pull it out. And then there's another function that goes pretty hand in hand with this when doing some crazy extrusions like this, or I like to have it hand in hand, is to go to structure inner extrude. Now, if you watch what that does, it is going to bring in your selection and basically, in essence, create a border. So when I go back to extrude, it's going to extrude that. And I can more or less do that infinitely. So inner extrude, you can actually go out also, but I'll just go in and go to structure extrude again and freaking keep going as much as you want. Now you can also do a bevel, which is going to extrude with that sort of closing in on itself. And you can actually uh, adjust how your bevel will work like so. So now I have a much more drastic bevel, much more drastic than that one, and it comes to a much smaller close. So yeah, this is a pretty modern art piece of geometry. I'm digging it. Pretty cool. So that's a lot of what you need to know, if not all, right now of under what's under the structure uh, tab. Functions, this is where some of the technical stuff comes in. So let's say, okay, so I have this face right here, and I want to extrude it, all right? But then I say, all right, I want to extrude several pieces of it randomly because I'm making something totally abstract that is really weird and should be made by people on crack, which is probably what I am. So instead of taking the knife tool as such, as I will demonstrate now, and going like this and making really uneven cuts that are no good and taking hours to do something like that, we can subdivide this geometry. So I'm going to go to functions, subdivide, and we can subdivide it. Let's do it twice. 
And now look at this. We have all this new geometry to work with. We have some weird shapes, so it kind of screwed up what was going on here. But uh, we won't worry about that right now. We just want to worry about these. So now, how I was talking before, I'm just going to start shift selecting random polygons. I uh, won't worry about that one. And go to structure, extrude. Yeah. And we can even uh, press T or the scale right there and just scale these towards that anchor point. We can actually go into individual ones and scale them towards their own anchor points, just like so. Or even just bring the scale up only in the Y direction, just like that. Just keep bringing it up. Yeah, give them some randomness. Maybe bring this one down. Make it more squared. Cool. So that's pretty much the explanation of that. Let's see what it looks like. Retarded. Awesome. Just how we want it. Okay. Under structure also, or sorry, under functions also, is a lot of random technical stuff that we just, we don't need to use right now. Um, subdivide triangulate is going to triangularly subdivide things. So if I go to triangulate, well, there's nothing to triangulate. So you need to subdivide first and then yeah, well, it did it because we already told it to. Uh, so it actually made triangular subdivisions. It really depends on what kind of geometry you're working with. Uh, I think this is useful when it gets really detailed, but I honestly don't use it much. I just know it's there. Um, and so those are the basics of modeling from a shape. We can also do something called modeling from splines. So I'm going to delete this cube and get started on that. Splines are basically invisible lines that um, that, that you're able to create. You're basically creating something from nothing. And those are all found if you hold down your mouse right here. They're all found right here. And there's lots of different types. Most of them are self-explanatory. Uh, but And don't, don't be scared by these names, cubic, akima, linear. B-spline, Bezier, freehand, you know, they're they're all just more, you know, it's like beer, lots of different choices, so a little difference. So what we can do is, I mean, okay, so maybe that's not entirely true. Freehand is obviously going to be, whoa, I drew a spline, awesome. You can see it's a line made up of points. Wonderful, that's what a spline is. We can go into the Bezier, and it's a lot like, it's just a bell curve, where I can do that and then go back onto any point and reshape that bell curve twisting those handles. Cool, so that's nice to know. If we, and yeah, this is a matter of just testing the different ones out. B-spline, uh, it's just, every, it's always going to be smooth no matter what you do. You can't adjust it, but you can make that and then in your type under the object properties for the spline, change it to Bezier and now it, it sort of unsmoothed everything, but you can go in and change all of those. So you can always go back and forth from them. So I can go back to B-spline, and it's going to smooth everything. I can go to linear, and now everything is a line, exactly what linear means. Um, we can go to cubic, which is just a different kind of smooth. Just It's just a different look. We can go to akima. These are all just different looks. So let's go ahead and take this, and let's build something. For instance, I'm going to go into four views because it's, since splines are flat generally, it's a lot easier to see what we're doing. So I'm going to take, uh, let's see, uh, I'm going to make my own shape. I'm going to take a B spline because it's smooth. So I'm going to put some points randomly on the map, just like that. All right. So basically in Cinema 4D, what we have to do is use other little modifiers in order for this to do anything. So I'm going to use something called the sweep nerbs modifier to show you how this particular example works. Because this is kind of snake-like and that's what the sweep nerbs is good for. So right now I'm going to drag this and make it a child of the sweep nerbs. And you do that by just dragging it under. So now we have the parent and the child. And you can see there's lots of different options as with everything in Cinema 4D with sweep nerbs. So but basically the way sweep nerbs does is it takes two splines and it it takes the shape of one and applies the path of it to that. So let me demonstrate. I'm going to take a circle spline and 
put it in the axis that faces this way, so the ZY axis. I'm going to make it a ton smaller, and I'm going to also make it a child of the sweep nerves above the spline. So now we have this banner looking thing along that path. It's, it's actually should not be on that plane of axis. So we're going to change it back to XY. Perfect. So now we have this tube. That's how you make a c totally custom tube. So now we can uh, really go into this, see if there's any geometry problems. It looks pretty smooth. Um, you can go into the circle and change how it works. You can uh, change the radius always, just like that. We can make this an ellipse and see how that changes things. A ring, just like that. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And change the inner radius, or should I say the uh, that radius right there. So now it's really like a pipe. That's pretty freaking awesome. And uh, let's see, I mean, just play around and see what these things do. Yeah, if you put it on none, we have like no smoothing on that. Maybe that's what you want. Uh, natural is going to be pretty freaking smooth because we can change the number of smooth points it has to it. You can actually see this is kind of what I was wanting to look at some geometrical geometry mess ups right here that can be solved by increasing how many points you're using in your natural. Uh, adaptive is also pretty darn good usually just kind of adapts to what you're doing which is pretty uh, uh, in plain English is what it says, which is a lot of cinema. It's scary, but it's in plain English. So cool. That's sweep nerves. Uh, also, we have plenty of, of other ones of these. Lathe nerves is going to lathe something. If you know what that means, it, it basically, well, I'll just show you. So let's take, this is actually very useful in like a side view right here. So I'm going to this is this is good in this this is, I'm going to show you an example of like making a goblet or a vase or something and it'll be really bad like that's totally cool so I'm going to make these points meet at the center I'm going to drag this under the lathe nerves tool and now if we go into the 3D version yeah I mean we have this really cool thing and we can make it editable just like that so now it's real geometry and now we're going to use all of our skills we can go into the um, point mode right here and selection. Actually, we can go into the top view. That's a little hard to see, actually, like that. Let's do it this way. So go into top view and maybe put on hidden lines like that. Yeah, perfect. This is, this is everything we learned so far. This is an awesome example. And let's go into the lasso tool. We haven't used that quite yet. And just lasso around all the points that we're going to want to delete, just like that, and delete them. And let's go back down. And awesome, we have this little uh, vase that you can put flowers in. I can make a, <laughs> uh, or put a person in. I'm just going to make a figure. And there you go. There's a dude rotating in a flower vase. How convenient is that? It's just so perfect. And that looks pretty cool. I mean, it obviously, like you can see, it needs some smoothing. So you may, uh, well, why don't I show you one way that that could be done? And, uh, since we're doing something pretty custom, I can't promise it'll work perfectly, but let's give it a shot. So let's go back to garage shading. This actually is the next thing I wanted to get to, so perfect. There is a way to non-destructively smooth destructed objects in Cinema 4D, and it's called HyperNurbs. HyperNurbs takes the geometry that you currently have and smooths it accordingly. So if you just click right here on the HyperNurbs and make this a child of it, it smoothed the hell out of it. Look at that. It is completely smooth. So what HyperNerbs is doing is saying, okay, it's subdividing it like that, but you can always turn it off. And what it, the way it works is it subdivides based off of how much geometry you already have. So what I can show you right now is I'm going to make both of these um, so you can't see it. I'm going to make a cube. Notice that this cube has very little geometry. It only has six sides as opposed to freaking um, this thing, which already had all of this crazy awesome geometry. So if I make another hypernerbs object and make the cube a child of it, it damn near turned it into a sphere. You see that? Like, because it didn't have any geometry to work with. Now, since I'm in the fake mode of the cube where it's not editable, I can go up and down with the subdivision. 
I can increase the subdivision and therefore the hypernerbs will act accordingly. That's another reason not to go editable yet. It's like once you go editable, you never go uneditable. You never go back. So, but now I can uh, make this editable and make this editable and now it's just a legit object. The, the hypernerbs, you can, you can make hypernerbs editable also. So you can make any of these editable so that they are no longer random objects it is true geometry because like okay so if i wanted to s extrude some random stuff i can through um through the cubes geometry if i not through the hypernerbs now if i select the cube and start selecting geometry like that and go to structure extrude and pull it out like that it will be smoothed from the hypernerbs but i can't select every one of those little uh little polygons unless I make the hypernerbs editable then I can go literally um, at these little polygons like that which is pretty cool and uh, I'm gonna show you what I just did in just a second but now there's, there's no hypernerbs on it so those are you know there is no there aren't there is no hypernerbs anymore so these aren't gonna smooth what I just did actually a second ago is I brought up a short menu which is M just like that and then if you press any one of these letters you can pull up all of those structure um, tools so I happen to know that MT is extrude and MW is inner extrude so if I just get rid of this cube make a new one C for editable the C key or just click it and come over here and select that face if I press MW just real fast I can extrude enter and MT is extrude. Those are just my useful hotkeys that I have in my head. Likewise, this entire menu, which I um, I demonstrated in the interface tutorial, is also easily accessible with the V key, just like that. So functions or structure, extrude, if you ever forget, enter extrude. And what's great is um, all of those hotkeys like MW and MT are listed right here. So extrude enter MW or just I apparently so uh, let's see MT or just I yeah uh, maybe I'll remember that I've never used that so what else what's the other one um, extrude just D so D BAM cool I'm kind of I, I'm just used to pressing MW like that it just I know it'll pull up that menu so yeah hypernerbs is extremely useful as you could see I'm going to delete that in our vase example because it was just a simple fix. There was no, eh, I'm going to smooth this out, I'm going to smooth this out. No, it was perfect. It was a perfect example for us to use that kind of thing. If we render, it's perfect. If we add a light and bring it up and over to the side and over here and render it, yeah, that's some good looking stuff. Make another one. Bring it to the other side. You know, give, give it a little bit of a studio look. Just like that, maybe bring the brightness down to about half and render. Yeah, it's too bright on the inside because we lit it like crap, but that's okay. And so anyway, you have lots of these to play with. Um, I'm not going to get into them. Extrude NURBS is probably the other one I should get into. That's like if you have, for instance, a cog wheel and you bring the extrude NURBS that just literally extrudes it. And then you can say, okay... Extrude it more. Extrude it this way. Extrude it that way. So that one's pretty self-explanatory and pretty simple. It's a matter of making things children and making those the parents. That's what the relationship's called. Okay, the last thing we're going to look at in this modeling tutorial is uh, the, or actually the last few things are the Boolean, the instance, and uh, symmetry right here so let's do those real quick and then we'll be on our way to the next uh, the next boot camp cinema 4d tutorial so I'm gonna explain these as simply as I can boolean boolean basically you does mathematical equations with two pieces of geometry so let's bring a cube and a sphere in bring the sphere over here so right now we're gonna make both of these children of the boolean and the boolean we're gonna say a which is this subtract B so okay so the sphere is going to subtract the cube so watch if we bring the cube into the sphere it's the sphere is literally subtracting it now it's 
kind of hard to see that it's subtracting a cube because it's smaller. So let's make the sphere a lot bigger. Now we can see that it's subtracting from its own geometry in the shape of the cube. So we can get some really complex uh, shapes like this. I mean, that's pretty freaking cool. Let's increase the segments on the sphere so it's smoother. Yeah, I mean, that looks like a little men in black. Let's see if we made uh, if we made the size of the Y bigger. That's like a little men in black egg where they sat and took the tests for uh, to see who would be in the men in black. Uh, it's a pretty awesome reference. Now, if we switch these up, bring the cube up top, we're going to subtract the sphere from the cube. So now we get this awesome looking cube shape with uh, with a with like a concave indention in it. So that's what the Boolean does, and you can change the math equation that it's using right here. So A union B, so it's going to create one object out of those, and then you can do hide new edges, and you won't get all that crap on the side. So that's kind of nice. You can do A intersect B, so whatever is intersected between the two, you're going to be able to see. Uh, A without B, so it just, it, di it didn't keep any of that inside geometry. It just got rid of it. So all of these, uh, Boolean is pretty freaking cool and very useful. More useful than the Boolean is the instance. Instance, check this out. I'm going to do a little modeling to this thing just to make this even more obvious what this does. So I'm going to blah, 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 blah. This is always how I model really simple, stupid crap. Blah, blah, blah. Just make some shapes. Maybe bring it over here. Blah, 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 blah. A little chimney. Um, you know, you can also with the extrude inner bring it in. Uh, whoops, just like that. Okay, so here's a cool shape. Awesome. All right, now with this selected, I'm going to choose instance, and I'm going to move the instance to the side. So basically, I just copied that. Now with the instance, I can rotate it independently. I can move it independently. I can size it. Okay, I cannot move. I cannot size it independently. So if I start sizing this thing, basically an instance does what your original object does. So for instance, if I take this face and bring it out, if I extrude an inner and bring it out, this object does exactly what this one does. This is extremely useful. I can't even think of the examples where this helped me out so much because also it's not real geometry, especially if you press render instance. It's fake. It's not like, you know, I don't know. I don't even know if it's taking up all this geometry space. I just know it's useful and that it's awesome. It's just a mirror image and it does whatever the original one does so you don't have to keep redoing the same thing to a million objects. It's awesome. Just trust me and make sure to use it. Okay. Last thing in here, we're going to look at symmetry, which is all, well, pretty self-explanatory, so we'll make something easy for the last. If I uh, bring this cube under the symmetry right here and bring it out, that is the point of symmetry. So we have these two cubes. Uh, well, it's one cube, but it's symmetrical. That... There's, there's not much explaining beyond that. And so yeah, that is basic modeling. It's really all just run from there. That is uh, modeling at its finest form, so take that with you. Those are what you need to get going, and stay tuned for more Bootcamp, CreativeCal.net. I am Neil Berenblatt, and there will be more Bootcamp.